you why. I wanted to touch on the interceptions a little bit. Okay. He threw too many. You, you want him to live on the edge of playmaking, but we can't be in unnecessary moments overly aggressive with the football for Dak Prescott last year. He threw too many. Okay, he threw 15 in the regular season. He's coming off his, his worst season, throwing 17 interceptions. If people are going to say that Josh Allen leads the NFL in interceptions, we also have to put it into the context that he leads the NFL in touchdowns as well. You don't, you, you, you can't give the ball away. You cannot be forcing with the football or overly aggressive. The man is leading the league since he's been starting. But Marcus, like, I'm looking at the interceptions and saying, why are they happening? Sometimes interceptions just happen. It's a poor decision by the quarterback. But agree. we want to sit here and say that he's got turnover issues. They, there has been a progressive regression. Well, see, what I would say there, Dan, though, no, the first first interception got away from him clearly because of the balance but of his feet. But it's an awful decision. It, it, the regular minicamp were over. He headed back to Arizona where he was training before the draft. Kept working at it. Oh, look, we have an analyst here, someone who's supposed to be unbiased and objective, waiting with bated breath for the Dallas Cowboys to lose so that he could do what exactly? rub it in the fan base's face because he's been feeling the fire that's been placed firmly under his sorry ass. Dan Orvlovsky, you are one of the biggest cowards that I have ever seen grace my TV screen working for any of the major big name networks because not only do you cry and whine like a little girl when people call out how non-objective and biased and skewed all of your opinions are but then you then turn around and want to try to rub it in people's faces when you feel as though you're right but you're really not right are you what you said was Josh Allen was going to outplay Dak Prescott and have this amazing game and, and firmly put himself back at the front of the league's MVP race, even though the Bills are eight and six, even after beating the Dallas Cowboys and still aren't even in position to be in the playoffs yet. What you didn't count on, however, was both of the quarterbacks actually had pretty subpar games. Dak Prescott only threw for 134 yards. About half of that was garbage time yards and one garbage time interception when he was just trying to force something to happen at the end of the game had no bearing or effect at all on the game. It was 31 to three at the time he threw that interception in the fourth quarter. Josh Allen only completed seven passes out of 15 attempts for 94 yards and a touchdown. You know what this game plan shows me whenever the running backs have a combined 20 or so odd more carries than Josh Allen has a chance to throw the ball. It's that for one, the Bills had an amazing game plan and they exploited one of the Cowboys weaknesses and the Bills dominated both of the line of scrimmages on offense and defense. So that's really where that game was lost for the Dallas Cowboys. There isn't a big mystery. We don't have to do a lot of research. We can very clearly see why we lost. We got dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides. Dak was getting sacked more than often. We were seeing the defensive line just getting absolutely blasted off of the ball. And James Cook ran for almost 200 yards rushing on a 7.2 yard average. That's why we lost. That is the reason the Buffalo Bills beat the Dallas Cowboys. Not Josh Allen having some type of Superman or superhero performance that you could then beat your chest to. Josh Allen accounted for a grand total of, wait for it, 118 yards this entire game. Albeit he had two touchdowns, but even without those two touchdowns, the Bills would have won by a whole touchdown. So no, Dan Orvlovsky, this isn't the time for you to beat your chest and want to say, Cowboys fans, why don't you guys let me do my job and be an analyst and y'all stay being fans? Cute video, though. Well, you see, the problem with that, Dan Orvlovsky, is this isn't exactly an I was right moment. You were banking on your boy Josh Allen being the catalyst as to why the Bills beat the Cowboys. You were banking on him to show why he's an MVP candidate, but what we really saw was an organization that has made a concerted effort to take the ball out of Josh Allen's hands more. Actually, since the offensive coordinator change for the Buffalo Bills, the Bills have made a concerted effort to run the ball. In this game against the Cowboys, at no point did they ever put the game back in Josh Allen's hands. They didn't even want him running the ball at all to the point to where they literally rushed the entire second half pretty much. I think Josh Allen might have completed like one or two passes the entire second half. 
the Bills don't trust Josh Allen. Dan Orlovsky, I don't think that does very much for you when you're one of the champions of how Josh Allen can carry a team and how he can be the deciding factor in a game that is won, when honestly, pretty much anybody could have stood back there and did what Josh Allen did today because the Bills were making sure that the game wasn't on his shoulders and that's the facts and you can get as salty as you want to because you were exposed by way of this amazing video composed by guitarist jt on x i'm gonna just show you a snippet of it real quick i think the whole conversation around oh my gosh josh allen and these interceptions that he's throwing aren't actually within context and are way overblown than what the reality of tape says you don't, you, you, you can't give the ball away. You cannot be forcing with the football or overly aggressive. Well, well, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Did we not go through a whole offseason? Don't do that. I say. Dissected no, Dak Prescott no. and all in, in the turnovers. I, I, and what's wrong with and, and right. Dak, Dak and his turnovers and what's you, wrong? No, because I've had we not so go many through all sensitive that? Cowboys fans. Matthew Stafford, I talked about what is. The, the, the conversation last year with Dak was about what? interceptions yeah right like hugely we stopped this stupid conversation about interceptions and oh my gosh josh allen and it's gonna be the reason that they don't win a super bowl whole off season all we've heard is don't give the ball away you can't be great in this league if you do and you certainly can't win a super bowl if you are and now you're upset because you have to sit there and look at that video and we know you've seen it now but you have to sit there and look at that video and see just how terrible of an analyst you actually are. And as I said in this quote post, continue to live vicariously through Josh Allen, Dan Orlovsky, because we all know your career amounted to nothing more than a runny morning shit. Thus far, your career as an analyst has been just as forgettable. So I'm going to tell you guys now what to expect out of good old Dan Orlovsky this week. And I'm sure I'm going to get plenty of content out of Dan Orlovsky. I'm going to make some nice money off of him. But I'm going to tell y'all what to expect. You're going to see him giving way too much credit to Josh Allen for the way the Buffalo Bills dominated the Cowboys. He's going to take Dak Prescott out of the MVP conversation and talk about, I told you so, even though, again, this game had honestly nothing to do with Dak Prescott. The penalties and the line of scrimmage being dominated is why the Cowboys lost this game. No, I'm not blaming the penalties on the refs. Those were really boneheaded penalties that we committed, and this loss was completely self-inflicted, and the Bills did what they were supposed to do. But as far as any analyst trying to make this something that it's not, or try to use this as a chance to try to magnify the false deficiencies of Dak Prescott that they've been trying to peddle all season, that's not it. The Cowboys are 10 and 4. Every other MVP candidate that's played so far this year has had stinkers. But I still think Dak pretty much controls his fate with that because if he plays very well against the Dolphins and the Detroit Lions, then he's more than likely going to shoot right back to the top of that conversation. But Dan Orlovsky, you're still a bitch. Either way, y'all know how we end these videos. How <laughs> them Cowboys. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Calling me, texting me. Paging me, asking me, am I still in ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still in boys. Hey! Woo! Hey! Oh, shut up, my boy. Shut up. Hey! I'm still in boys.